our programs offer many languages, please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. How necessary it is that one learns to feel the heart, not as one's own, but as something that belongs to the entire world. Only through this feeling can a person begin to liberate himself from egoism. Please continue watching for messages from the Agni Yoga volume, Heart, by Nicholas and Helena Redich. Evangeno Andrew Saintly Viewers Evangeno Andrew translates to Have you been well in the Ainu language, one of the regional languages of the island of Sakali. I am Alexander. The happy people of Sakhalin pray to heaven to bless and keep you safe always. The esteemed mystical and philosophical writers Nicholas Rorick and his wife Lina Rorick are two of the most influential spiritual thought leaders from Russia. They are recognized for founding a doctrine called Agni Yoga also known as living ethics, believed to be a synthesis of all yogas, spiritual disciplines. Agni Yoga focuses on the daily practice of love, beauty and noble action. Nicholas Rorick was also a very cherished artist whose illuminating paintings, charged with the energy of his mystical experiences, drew many pilgrims from around the world. His wife, Helena Rorick, was the reason for his interest in Eastern spirituality and theosophy. Thus, the artist even depicted her in his painting titled She Who Leads. Traveling extensively throughout Asia to deepen their spiritual studies, the Roricks eventually met their master in Darjeeling, India. The ascended venerated Master Moria, also known as El Moria, is a master of a great white brotherhood, an order of ascended masters and their incarnated disciples, one of whom was Helena Blavatsky. In fact, Master Moria inspired the founding of the Theosophical Society, and to the Rorics, he was the inspiration behind all of their noble ideals for the world. Moria revealed messages of higher wisdom to Nicholas and Helena Rorick, which they recorded on paper and later gathered into a series of texts. Today we continue with an excerpt from Helena and Nicholas Rorick's volume, Heart, which is part of the series entitled Science of Agni Yoga. Through these treasure writings, the spiritual messengers remind us that the heart needs to be liberated in its connection with universal energy. Humanity's core is in need of selflessness and nourishment in order to be kept safe from hardness and so that we can remember its important value. Doubt means the downfall of quality. Doubt is the tomb of the heart. Doubt is a source of ugliness. Doubt must be touched on in every talk, because where will we end up without quality? What will we understand without the heart? What will we attain without beauty? People will ask, why does infinity come first, then hierarchy, and only then heart, rather than the reverse? But first comes the direction, then the link, and then the means. One must not mark this sacred means with doubt. Let us observe the quality of a person's pulse when he is experiencing doubt and also when he is engaged in faithful striving. If doubt is able to change the pulse and emanations, what physical deterioration it may work upon the nervous system. Doubt devours psychic energy. After thinking about doubt, let us recall treachery itself. For who is more intimate with doubt? Than a traitor. 
One can overcome this darkness only through communion with the hierarchy, with the most inevitable, partaking of it as one with the radiance of the sun. True, it does burn, but without it, there is darkness. The heart may be the focus, but it is the least egocentric of all. Not egoism dwells in the heart, but a feeling that embraces all humanity. Only reasoning shrouds the heart in a web of egocentricity. Kind-heartedness is measured not so much by good actions, which may arise from so many different causes, but by one's inner kindliness, which kindles the light that shines in the darkness. In this sense, the heart is truly a transnational organ. If for us light is a symbol of the aura, its parent will be the heart. How necessary it is that one learns to feel the heart not as one's own, but as something that belongs to the entire world. Only through this feeling can a person begin to liberate himself from egoism, while preserving the individual nature of his accumulations. It's difficult to embrace both individuality and universal containment, but there is good reason for the magnet of the heart to be connected with the chalice. You can understand how the heart radiates a special light that is refracted in every possible way by the substance that composes the nerves. The crystal of the psychic energy can be colored in so many ways. It is very difficult to purify the heart if the web of egoism is making it fat. The fat of egoism is a bestial inheritance. The pure accumulations of individuality can explain things of which the reason cannot even conceive. It is especially difficult to impress someone with a notion that has never entered the circle of his imagination. The heart is considered the palace of the imagination. How is it possible to move forward if the power of imagination is missing? But where will imagination come from if not from experience? Heartlessness is nothing but an uncultured state of the heart. Faint-heartedness arises from limitation of thinking, intolerance, belongs to the same family of abominations, all of which degrade the sacred vessel of the heart. You already know that a refined heart, whose energy is intensified, provides an impulse similar to that of an electrical generator. This shows that the heart is a vessel of universal energy, but the culture of the heart does not accumulate unless it receives proper nourishment. Likewise, the best accumulator will be inactive unless it's protected and connected properly. The heart demands constant nourishment. Without it, the heart is deprived of the highest link and begins to decompose. In light of this, let us not forget how the ancients symbolized a scent by depicting an infant on the bottom of the chalice. By conducting a rarely performed experiment, you can see how the heart reflects even distant earthquakes and other world events. You can note how not only cosmic perturbations, but even reflections of the spirit's radiation act over great distances. We pay attention to the transmitter of prana, to the lungs, which pass the essence onto the heart as a way to establish universal equilibrium. The new achievements being made in the subtle body are now being crowned with success. These achievements could no longer be deferred because the foundation of the link, the magnet of the hierarchy, was being violated. As an aid in the restoration of the violated equilibrium, a new kind of subtle body is being developed. When the treasures of energy Exceed the treasures of the heart and straight knowledge. A co-worker mentor is usually sent to establish equilibrium. A professor actually was attached to Washington, and the sage of the mountain was with Genghis Khan. 
Many similar examples could be cited. You should regard this as in something that enhances their activity, not as an absolute requirement. There are also many examples when a man of action rejected such cooperation, thereby bringing irreparable harm not only to themselves but also to the common good. We have experienced such refusals time and again. Precisely, it was the heart's lack of development that prevented an increase in the possibilities that had been built up by past accumulations. Our hand will not get tired of extending the saving thread to the heart. Who can justly say that we were late in offering help? But we can cite many occasions when our messenger was frozen by people's heartlessness. It is so hard to bring into action the potential of the heart. One must manifest a flight over the abyss, as if soaring from the last shore into the infinite. How sacred is the courage of selflessness, which opens up the heart. Can you picture what a humanity with healthy bodies and uncultured hearts would be like? It is difficult even to imagine such a feast of darkness. All the illnesses and infirmities in the world are unable to restrain the rampant madness of the heart. Truly, so long as the heart remains unenlightened, illnesses and infirmities will not be eliminated. Were that not the case, the frenzy of the heart coupled with powerful bodies would horrify the worlds. Long ago, it was said of a righteous man that he walked before the Lord, which meant that he did not violate the principle of hierarchy and thus had purified his heart. Through even the slightest purification of the human heart, one can derive a cascade of blessings. Nowadays, it is all right to act if cautiously not only in cases where the heart has not decayed. You should not get depressed about it, but you need to know that the darkness has intensified and many hearts are putrefying. The significance of the heart is an old truth, but this truth has never been so needed as now. Magnificent viewers, we thank you for being with us for today's program entitled Selection from Science of Agni Yoga, Heart, by Spiritual Messengers Nicholas and Helena Rorich, Vegetarians, Part 2 of 2 in Words of Wisdom. Coming up next is Heaven is Beautiful, Near-Death Experiences of Reverend Peter Panagor, Part 4 of 4, right after noteworthy news. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more uplifting programming. May each of your days be treasured as a precious jewel, filling the heart and soul with peace and universal love. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programmes offrent plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WOW. Y nuestros programas son ofertos en muchas lenguas. Consultate suprememastertv.com barra schedule e suprememastertv.com barra w o w 